Hi everyone, Miss Ross again. It's another conquest issue time, another piece of terrain. You know how much I love my terrain. So, cast your mind back way back when. We had part one of this pack, the, the servo haulers. And they had some remaining bits left over on sprue. And you're thinking, eh, what's this for? What's this for? Well, if you don't know, the kit originally was two halves of these Conquest magazines. So one of them were the two tractors, and the other one was the crane. So we have the crane here, Shazam. And all these little bits are for the crane. So hopefully you didn't chuck them out or use them as pieces of the train, which I was quite tempted with, to be fair. But it's a very similar style, so it looks quite like the tractor on the front there. Um, so yeah, so I've seen a lot of people have used this, um, chopped off the base, and they've used it on top of some of the Mechanicus terrain, like to repair their Imperial Knight, things like that, which is a great idea. Uh, I might pick up another one of these in the future and do a conversion, but for now, I'm going to assemble it and paint it. For once, like the box art. So last time I was slightly different colour. Uh, I used some chipping fluid, chipping medium. And I love that stuff. I think I might use the same stuff again, but this time I'm going to paint it more like this kind of colour. So last time I think I rocked a little bit of the... Giving it a shake. It's just habit. I can't help it. Vallejo Khaki. Uh, I'm not sure what colours I have that are close to that. So I'll see what I've got. And go from there. But this is the delightful piece of terrain. So you see the usual little plates there, little brass plates and stuff that you get. And very much in theme with the others. A nice little servo skull there. It's pretty cool on some kind of chalk block. Pretty nice. So this is the magazine itself, if anyone cares about the magazine itself. No one generally buys it for the magazine, do they? So, Storm Talon Gunships, okay, so it's giving it a little bit of a rating on there, so what the firepower's like, the speed's like, armor rating's like. Now, I wouldn't agree with that, because if you play with Iron Hands, that um, firepower rating goes right up. So you've got last cannons, and you can earn the heavy weapon penalty. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good, they're pretty good. Alright, Forces of Drakari. So... Drakari, I still call them Dark Elder, because that's what they are, it's Dark Elder. They'll call them, you know, Adeptus Custodes, or, you know, you just call them Custodes, or Adeptus Astartes, it's Space Marines, isn't it? That's just me. Plus, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit racist, you know. Call it what you see, pointy ears, it's an elf, right? So, um, yeah, that's why I play Space Marines, you see? I'm a space racist. These are elves. That's what they are. But lovely models. Now the sun's gone mega bright all of a sudden. But I have to admit, when I first started getting back into 40k, I picked it up a long, long time ago. Eldar just came in, and the models were they're pretty cool. But now plastic's come a long, long way. It looks so much better. The Talos, one of my favourite Dark Eldar things now, because before it looked kind of like mechanical kind of scorpion now it looks more like someone's carved the hulk in half and put the same armor on him so you can see like the biomechanical stuff shining through there how to build your mechanicus crane so quite basic quite basic like the rest of the stuff but so much fun to paint so they suggest going with mephiston red Follow with a dry brush of Wild Rider Red. Okay, so that's a bit of a different colour. Uh, I have used like the Hemotope reactors. I have painted them like that kind of yellow before, making it more like a Tonka toy. But that does look more like an, an orange colour. Uh, I can see a few old GW paints that are looking at me, some old, old paints. Um, have a little root around here just for a quick second. So I would say it looks more like if he was organized, this would be great. Right. 
and I'm talking old, old paints. So, um, what's that, Vomit Brown, maybe? The label's gone, but that kind of colour, that's the kind of colour, I imagine. I'm putting some washes over it. But not before some chipping medium. Yes, I'm addicted to chipping medium. I love the stuff. So this is pretty cool. I do like the look of it. Uh, it's not much for a hard hardcover because you can still see a lot of stuff behind. But it just adds a little something to the table. I think it looks pretty cool. You can paint any colour you want, obviously. Okay, so gameplay rules. Apparently that whole area there is a cover zone. I suppose it would be. It's, it's a moving crane, it's real. Ooh, maybe I could put a motor in it. That would be pretty cool. I put a motor in it so it's just constantly spinning. But then you know I'm going to knock it off the table or knock people's models over. And as per always, on the back of Conquest, it will tell you what's coming up in the next issue. So I've already got these issues because I get them monthly. So, some Chaos Spawn. Now, I was going to pick some of these up back along, but here and there coming out in Conquest, I thought, I will just wait. This stuff is fantastic. I use that a lot, that Oxide, as an actual wash. I know it's not what it was intended for. Um, on my Warcry, uh, Warcry terrain. So I thought that was fantastic. And, of course, you've got to have Nurgle's Rot. Especially if you have a Nurgle army. So that is the colour I'm going to aim for. Kind of. And this stuff is really, really easy to put together. So I will put it together off camera and start spraying up and show you what I've been doing. Okay, so I've finally assembled this crane now. Uh, as you can see, it's in a little cardboard spray booth because guess what? Surprise! I'm actually going to spray it. Yay! Didn't see that coming, did you? So, all assembled. Uh, I have fixed it in position at a slightly quirky angle. Uh, I was half tempted to rig up some kind of motor and have it spin round, but that's just dangerous <laughs> and obviously extremely time consuming. Um, I will eventually get another one of these and probably stick them on top of some kind of piece of terrain or even on the back of an orc vehicle because I like the look of the, I don't know, maybe a recovery nature or something. So, I am going to get the old airbrush ready. I'm going to hit it with some browns and put a little bit of orange in there as well. So, giving my paints a bit of a shake. Chucking some brown in. Just using the old Vallejo model airs. And I'm dropping a little bit of this orange in there as well. Just going to give that a bit of a mix up. Just a little hint, just a little bit of a hint. Nothing too crazy. Just a bit of a hint of orange. Putting it in the bowl, like so. And I'm going to give this a bit of a blast. So I'm just using a cardboard box. I've Cut off a couple of sides from because of the <coughs> excuse me, um, obviously, the spray is going to go everywhere. So, nice and light to begin with. Usual thing, getting in all the hard to reach places first. Standard airbrush practice if you're just going to spray a whole piece. So it's quite difficult to see because it's not too dissimilar colour. Nooks and crannies first, then getting on the easy stuff. Alright, I will spray up this whole thing. I'll come back once it's all dry. Okay, so what I've done is cover the whole thing in that brown, and it's not too dissimilar from the plastic, as you can see there. Uh, and what I've done is different grades of orange over it, so little different spats of orange. 
I think you can see like a little bit there, for example. And what I want to do with this is cover it completely in chipping medium, which is one of my favorite things. And then once it's fully gone off, you can activate it a bit of moisture, maybe a toothbrush, and just aggravate the area. So the idea is I'm going to get rust shining through the paint, but different kind of styles of rust, different textures, different depths. So a bit stippling there, a bit of the rust shining through. Now you can get quite dark rust. Uh, being a mechanic, I find that the darker the rust, the thinner the metal is, the harder the corrosion. But it doesn't show up very well underneath paint. So for miniature purposes, I know that's more realistic, but I'm going to go with this kind of colour. So I've got my chipping medium in my bowl. And I'm just going to blast it. So it is a bit thick chipping medium. So you might want to use a little bit of the old airbrush thinner. And just to make sure I've covered everything, I'll go over this twice. And there's a lot of hard to reach places on this, so an airbrush really is saving a lot of time. So getting all the little nooks and crannies. I'm going to cover the whole thing, all the little bits, and I'll come back once I'm starting to agitate it a little bit with a toothbrush. Not my toothbrush, someone else's. Okay, so I've put two coats of the chipping medium on just to make sure it's definitely sealed. And once it's fully dry, you don't want to spray it when it's still wet, because it could uh, activate the paint. Let me give my paint a little bit of a shake. <coughs> now I was going to paint it a bit brighter than last time, uh, but considering they're part of the same range as the galvanic tractors, um, I wanted to paint them the same colour. So I'm going to go back with this stuff again. At least my set will look the same. So the colour on the artwork is slightly different, but I do quite like this khaki colour, so I'll add a little bit into my bowl. A little bit of airbrush in there. Make sure you're shaking your pot as well. Always shake your pot. Give it a bit of a, a bit of a stir. Make sure it's nice and mixed. Now I probably should be wearing gloves for this because I know I'm going to end up spraying myself. But usual things apply. So just make sure it's. Okay, just testing it on the cardboard. And just cover the whole thing nice and light to begin with. Trying to get in all the little recesses first. And there's a lot of recesses in this piece. And they can stand while I've um, got a cardboard behind now. This stuff will go everywhere. Just some seriously fiddly little bits on the seat. So don't go too heavy. You thought this is a bit you missed. It's too fiddly, you're putting too much paint down to stop, apply it somewhere else, go back to it later on. You don't have to cover it all in one hit. So it's getting in all the difficult bits first. Okay, I'll 
come back once I've done the whole thing. So once you've got all your base colour down, so I've gone with this delightful colour, you want to get a toothbrush like these. Just get a little bit of water on it to aggravate certain areas that you might think would be chipped and scraped. So I'm thinking this head here would be chipped and scraped. A bit of moisture there. And then the same on the other side. Just give it a second. And I'm thinking a little bit here would probably be aggravated. And on the lower side there. And a little bit on the top there. Definitely on the wheels. A bit of moisture will soften it a second. Definitely on the front of the trainee kind of bit, I think you'd call it. And a little bit there. So just have a bit of fun, mess around with it. So I'm going to soften those areas up. Now I'm going to attack here, as I said previously. You can already see it's starting to come away. Same here. Yeah, something pretty good. Underside, I reckon, be quite badly scraped because when you lower the crane, because it's real, remember, it's going to be rubbing on things, and bashing into whatever it wants to pick up, like crates and things like that. The lower side of them. that should be chipped a little bit. And on here. Look at that. Like I said, definitely the wheels. Now, constantly moving on those tracks. Over there, where it might be bashed around a little bit. On some rivets. Yeah. So just get as angry and aggressive with it as you want. So you can see it's starting to show through. Rub off the water a bit. Like so. You don't want anything too, too tidy. Well, not for me anyway, because I want it a bit industrial, a bit beaten. Of course, after you're done with this, you might want to seal it with some varnish or something, just to keep any moisture from attacking it again. So if anything's ever spilt on it or it's kept in a damp place, you don't want the paint coming off. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in a minute after I attack this. I'm going to seal it with some varnish, some lovely matte varnish, once it's all dry. And then the weathering begins. So the reason I do it this way around, it's a personal preference, there is a method in my madness, is for example here, where I've knocked off a little bit on the rivets, things like that. When I do the weathering, do the rusted water coming off the rivets, I want it to go over the top of the rust, giving the illusion of layers. See, the chipping has gone away. Underneath, all the paint's coming off. And the watery marks are running over the rivets, like over here, for example, over the top. And that's how I want to do it. So I'm going to scrub in a few more places of this, make it look a bit agitated. And then I'm gonna seal it with some good old matte varnish. Back in a minute guys. Okay, so I've used some matte varnish uh, to seal this stuff. Uh, with this matte varnish, it was actually a enamel and it gave it a bit of a, a dry tinge, which I like personally because it looks dusty and weathered and not shiny and clean. Because if the paint looked quite shiny and clean and it had chipping, it would like 
why would you wash a car that's chipped to hell kind of thing? You know, you know you've got a bit of an agricultural piece of machinery, and it's beaten to hell, and then you wash it and give it a polish. Does make sense. So I like this. There's a bit of a satin sheen to it, even though it's not a satin um, varnish. Now I have used it before in the past, and that's the effect I wanted to go with. So that's what I've got. So as you can see very closely, there's your chip in, and everything's nice and sealed. So my next port call is to get some silver, which I've gone with some bolt gun metal from Citadel, some old paint for me, because <clears throat> I've got a load of this stuff that needs using up. And now I'm going to pick out, I'm going to wet my brush, and pick out all the chains and all the hydraulic pipes, things like that that I want to. So get my tile, because you should never really go straight out the pot. And we're going to start applying that to the chains. Now this could take a while, but I want to be fairly neat, so I don't want to use too big a brush. But you can use probably something a bit bigger than what I'm using now. But I want to be neat. But don't worry if you do go over the lines and things like that, because you can always tidy it up later on. It's just easier if I don't go over the lines. So I'm just wiping a bit off, adding a bit of water on my palette. Just covering all the chains and I'm also going to cover the hydraulic pipes here as well. Uh, hydraulic pipes, hydraulic pistons. Those are the pipes, those are the pistons, Ross. You would have thought I knew that <laughs> being a mechanic, but hey ho. So this is all the stuff I'm going to pick out. So the chain all the way through, hydraulic pistons, any pipes. Um, any of the gears and things like that, in my head, I imagine are going to be really, really rusty because this thing hasn't moved for a while. Because I'm going to use rusted effects on top of the chains and things like that later on. But I've got a lot of this to cover, so I'll get back to you when it's all done. Okie dokie. Um, so all the silver stuff. Okie dokie, really? Let's start with that. Anyway, um, yeah, all the silver bits that I want silver, like all the wheels and the... Bits that spin round, cogs, I'm keeping a bit rusty, but all the chains and stuff like that, hydraulic pistons. I'm now going to put a bit of the old null oil on, one of my favourites. Just to dirty it up a bit. Hits all the recesses, hits all the bits that others can't reach. So, a bit of water, get my brush off. Recesses. All in the hips. All in the hips. Just to make all the metallic -y bits look a little bit less shiny. It should sit in all the recesses. I'm going over the actual main parts of it as well because I want to tone it down a fraction. But when it comes to the hydraulic pistons, I will probably not use this on there because I still want them to be a little bit shiny. Because if they were rusted, they wouldn't be operational. So getting all the little recesses there. Just like so. And then I'll do the chains and pipes and anything else. So this bit here. It's not using too fancy a brush. Something semi-accurate.
we're going to recess at the skull a little bit as well. And get loads in there. And later on, what I will do is probably use an Agrax or something to put on these wheels as well. Not on the bits where it meets the track because that would be worn clean. If it's on the move, it would rub the rust off. But anywhere where the wheel wouldn't actually touch the track, so the lower section or the outer section. Just in these springs as well. And the same thing with these springs. Once this wash is dry, I'll probably put an Agrax in there. Maybe make it a little bit dirty. As much in there as you want. Depends how dark you want to make it. And just keep plugging away. I'll finish all this up and we'll come back once it's dry. Okay, so now the no oil is dry. You can see that the metal looks a little older, a little bit more dirty. I've kept the pistons on the hydraulics up there, still quite shiny, but the claw is a bit dirtier. I might put some Agrax on that in a minute. But first I want to attack these reactor pieces. So I've got a little bit of white in my bowl. I'm just going to very, very gently... Just catch the center. On each one. So when I go for the blue later on, the center will be slightly brighter. Like so. And I might even hit these little lights as well. So I like to hit the little lights. Give it a contrast of old and grubby. It's still used. Imperium will use anything of its old technology. And that's it basically. Now I wait for that to dry and then I hit probably red on either side of that. And I'll go for blue on that. Now while I was waiting for the, the black no oil to dry, I've done a couple of little goldy pieces there which I've also put some agrax on in a minute and start some weathering streaks. And that's pretty much the basic thing there. I mean, you know, you can push it a bit more, more weathering. Um, probably not any edge highlights, things like that, because I don't want it too bright. I want it to be a bit dusty, a bit grubby. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to start adding some details, um, picking out some bits, just to make it sharp a bit more on the tabletop. So still keeping it a bit grubby, but still kind of eye-catching at the same time. Okay, so starting with the red light, I'm going to go with a slightly darker red initially, and hopefully I can blast the center a lighter red, so as gently as I can, work my way out. A little bit of background light as well. Like 
for that to dry and then hit it in the centre with the brighter red. So it should be like that. So get a little bit of background light. And then I'm going to go for the blue. You get the idea. So you see I've done the airbrushing on anything I want to glow. So a little bit in the lamp there. It's reactors. Um, so the centre should be a bit brighter because you effectively zenith will highlight the centre with your white blast. But if you want to add a little bit of white to the blue again and just do the centres to make them pop a little bit more. Now I'm using a little bit of the old Agrax to give a little bit of definition to anything like brass plating, things like that. Shows up a little bit better. Looking a bit more aged there. Like so, standing out a little bit more, hey. That's on the other side. And the one there. Okay, there's another one somewhere. Yep, yeah, there it is, hiding in plain sight. A little bit more of the old Agrax. Like so. Notice there is a little gauge there, I'll probably pick that one out later on because I do like my pressure gauges. So just adding a little bit of detail, that's the secret of this stuff. It's got to look pretty ropey, but with a little bit of detail here and there just to catch your eye. So you can use that Agrax as well if to pick out a few rivets and things like that if you like. So we'll pick out a rivet here. I'll we'll just do a little water trail. Down like so. Same thing here. Just a little water trail. Down like so. Not too much, nice and gentle. And I'll pick it out every now and again. Make sure it goes straight down. This is gravity was feeding this stuff. Do a couple more on the other side. One there, one there, just like so. Just a few details. Picking up over here as well. I'll do like a rusted nut, another rusted nut over here. So, Agrax works pretty well for this stuff. If, like me, you've got a load of old paints, I mean, Agrax is nice, but I used to like the old GW flesh wash. So, that pot's seen better days, as you can see. So getting a bit of that stuff. And doing the same trick again, so just next door to it. Just like so. So that pot isn't bad, but I like this as well. This orange wash, another one, it gets messy, gets under the cap, gets everywhere. Now I should have looked after them a bit better when I was younger. I didn't know any better. This is quite bright orange. 
This is fantastic. So I'm going to put a little bit here. Run them as well. A bit more eye catching, eh? Picking up a few rusty rivets. The cigarette does not do too much. And just slowly drag your brush. Just to give the illusion of rusted water. And you'll do a couple more on the other side in a second. Careful where I'm holding it because I've just painted the other side. Okay. It's just like that. Once again, push it as much as you want. You know, you, you can go a bit cleaner, but I want to make this thing look pretty beaten, pretty ropey. And those last two colours I showed make excellent washes when slightly watered down on rusted plates, things like that. So I think what I'll do now is I will put some Agrax over the tracks and everything uh, where it hasn't run onto the tracks for a while, making it nice and rusty there. Probably going to make the chains a bit rusty as well. So not a lot, just in a few places. Bit of Agrax. Just in there maybe. Where are we going to put it? In there. Can't have it too clean now, can we? I mix a few of these colours together as well. A bit of the orange with a bit of the brown. Without being too too neat. Put the spokes here. So I just think the cleanest place is at the moment, because this isn't well maintained, this machine, are probably where the bits move around. So that's probably going to be fairly clean around there. Where it rubs on the track below. So a little bit of rust in there. A little bit of agrax or something. Maybe now and again. So the metal doesn't look too too clean. Alright, just keep finding a few places to dirty up. Water stains, like so. I'm just picking out a few details. So a couple of things they'll get lost. Just like so. I 
I was going to paint a few of the skulls there white as well, but I thought too many different colours might have to look a bit too busy. Maybe if I wanted to make this thing a bit cleaner, possibly. I want to keep the base colours just that, just base colours. Some pipes there. I want a bit dirty underneath. I've seen some heat. I think I'll get the chain itself, maybe getting a bit of dirt on it as well. Get a slightly bigger brush and put a bit of Agrax in there. Just in a few places, maybe not on all of it. I mean, you can always make this fairly well maintained. Dry brush the silver rather than making it dirty. With a little bit of something a bit brighter, maybe a bit of Necron compound. Dry, br dry brush a bit of that on there. At the moment, I want to make this a bit dirty. I'm not making these claws. Rusted, but I'm also not making them look too clean. Okay, okay, so what I'm going to do with the claw itself is I like the fact that it looks still fairly silver, not too, too dirty, but I want to put a few scrapes and scratches on it. So I want it to be well used, but not well maintained, if that makes sense. So rusted in the places where it should be greased and only clean metal where it's been well used, scraped and scratched. So what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to put the occasional little scratch with a bit of the old mithril silver. So it's the brightest silver I've got and one of my favourite silvers. So I'll just put a little scrape there. A little scratch. And picking out the edge. So like I said, it's been well used, so it's beating around a bit. And what gets off rust better than being scraped? So you notice I'm using this side of my brush here, just edge highlight. Uh, it's fairly crude edge highlighting, but it is purely because A, it's quicker, and B, this isn't edge highlighting because it's bright, it's edge highlighting because it's been scraped. So that's what I'm going to attempt to show, just all the edges and things like that that may have been smacked about, scraped, and the shifting like cargo containers, things like that. I'll put a little scratches here and there. Using the side of the brush. So I'm picking up all the pieces closest to the tip of the claw. Okay, once done, I'll show you the final piece. That should be it. And so we have it, it's uh, pretty much all finished.
but like I said you can push it as far as you want so if you wanted to make the chains really really rusty like it's been sat up for ages totally fine but what I wanted was uh, rust on the rivets things like that has been well maintained but has been well used so anything that would clunk around all the time like the chains probably would clean themselves um, and the hydraulic pistons obviously still still shiny so there and there uh, because if they weren't then it wouldn't be very good hydraulics would it but you know you could do oil leaks and hydraulic pipes possibly and uh, you can do way more rust and push it further if you wanted to as well or totally inert and the little reactor coil was there not glowing but yeah I'm quite happy with this piece really fun to paint um, so yeah that's another one from Conquest guys thank you very much for watching Please hit the like button and please subscribe if you want some more content. See you next time.